Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, uh, after we beat USC, um, one of the things that we said in the locker room was, you know, there's people we always ask you, how do you feel about winning a game like this? And sometimes um, you just can't put into words how you feel. You just have to feel it. You have to be there and you have to have been there, be a part of it. And, um, you know, the same thing applies to when you lose at this part of the season. Um, hard to explain, hard how you feel when, you know, the season ends so suddenly. Um, but we put ourselves uh, in, in position to win a game that we probably had no business even being in given the circumstances that we work with. So when you say, well, you were lucky to be here given everything. But in the moment when you're trying to win the game and you don't win the game, you don't think about you were lucky to be here. You just think about we had an opportunity to win this game and we didn't. And, um, you know, Iowa won the game, and, and <clears throat> they get to go on, and we get to go home. At this time, we'll open it up for our student athletes. I ask that you raise your hand um, and, ask, and await the microphone reaching you. We're going to start in the back with the gentleman in the gray, and I see you. Uh, Dan Lobby, Cleveland.com. Um, Aaliyah, were you given an explanation uh, about the foul call, and, and what was your view of it? No, I wasn't given an explanation. There was no real time to get an explanation for it. Uh, my point of view is pretty clean. We'll go next to Jake on our right hand side. Yep, you're right there. One, one up. Yeah, Jake Trotter from ESPN. For for all the players, what did you make of of the screen call from your your vantage points on that play? We just had a play. Um, I thought we were going to run it. Um, I thought we executed it well. We were going to get a shot off. The whistle blew. Um, I didn't see it. It was in the rear of me. I was just trying to come off the screen. Um, everybody can make a big deal of that one single play, but not one single play wins a basketball game or loses a basketball game. I feel like there was a lot of mistakes that I made um, that could have prevented that play from even being that big or causing the game. Um, so, yeah, you you can look at one play and say, oh, that was like, oh, that, that killed us or that hurt us. But we should have done a better job. I should have done a better job of making sure we didn't leave the game up to chance like that and leave the game up to one bad call going our way and that deciding it. So, yeah, maybe that was a tough call for us, but I feel like – I could have done a better job preventing that from even happening. Take our next question from Nancy. Nancy Armour, USA Today Sports. Um, Aaliyah, there's been a lot of talk about the officiating and criticism of officiating this whole season. How disappointing is it, though, that we're talking about it again after what was a, a really good effort by you guys, especially given the circumstances you've been dealing with this season? Um, I mean, we can't really control what, what happens with the refs and, and their decision making, but I just want to focus more on this team and, and actually making it all this way to this game when a lot of people didn't count us in. So I'm going to leave this game with being proud of, of the team and proud of how we game in, game out, just continue to, to believe in each another and, and lean on one another. And unfortunately, we just didn't leave this game with the dub, but we, we fought hard and, and up until the very end. Um, yeah, there are some decisions that even myself, um, I wish I could take back, but that's just how um, the game went. And um, we left it out there on the court today. Going to stay to our right. Roger, please proceed. Paige, can you just talk about the effort that Nika played with today on the defensive end and then coming up with some big baskets when you needed them? I think seven assists as well. Just her overall game today. 
Yeah, I'm glad Nika got to show on this platform, um, on this stage, what she's been for us her entire four years at UConn, what she's been in this entire year. Um, just you, you saw the epitome of what Nika is, a uh, tenacious defender, does everything that this team needs her to do, um, controls her offense, plays with so much heart and energy, um, and plays with her whole soul. And you saw that tonight. You see that every single time she steps out on the court. Um, and so... I mean, she just does what Nika does, and she played her heart out. We're going to go to Maggie, the gentleman in the blue shirt, then Lindsay, Michelle. Dion, I see you as well. Maggie's in the front row right here. Maggie Benoni, CT Insider. Nika, on that same note, what made Caitlin so hard to guard? Um, I feel like I feel like just her confidence and, you know, Obviously, she, she's a great player, one of the greatest to play the sport. Um, I feel like she makes everybody around herself better. Um, so yeah, I mean, just overall, I would say her confidence and her ability to you know involve other players. Stay to our right. Um, for, for Paige and, and well, really any of you guys, um, Nika played 40 minutes, I think the last three games, and none of you guys were coming out uh, very often throughout this run. How did you physically maintain the intensity it requires to play that hard for that long this entire time? Paige, let's have you answer, and then we'll move on just due to time. Um, I, there's a lot of people that help us recover. Um, we have a masseuse that travels with our athletic training staff. Um, our doctors, they do a really good job of just making sure that we're resting, recovering, um, getting the treatments that we need. Um, and then just us being competitors, us being just grateful that we're here and trying not to take any of it for granted and not thinking about being tired or thinking about what aches, what hurts, um, how tired we are, um, and just being grateful that we're here and just trying to continue to play with that heart and play with the mentality of not being tired. Lindsay. Lindsay Chanel, USA Today. Um, Paige, when Ilya was being asked about the officials just a second ago, you're shaking your head and you look really frustrated. Are you mad that we're talking about it or are you mad that we're making a big deal about one call? No, I just, I'm just frustrated with the loss. Um, I mean, we can talk about officiating, but players players play, players decide the game. Um We're staying to our right with Michelle. Um, Michelle Smith from the next page for you because you'll be coming back. Are you? We, how long will it take you to find perspective and about what you guys did this season under some really difficult circumstances? Um. The only thing you can really feel right now is just like this thing of the loss. There was going to be tears regardless at the end of the season, um, just because it's my last time playing with these guys. It takes a while to process um, after the season, win or loss, the whole journey of it all. Um, but you just. For this year especially, um, with my perspective, you just appreciate it as it goes along. Just being around this team. Everybody saw the heart, the joy, the passion that we played with. Um, we just love each other. We enjoy being around each other. Um, and this season meant everything to us. Uh, against all odds. Nobody thought we would be here. All people posted about us was the worst ranking in 20 years, the worst start in 20 years, the worst seating in the tournament in 20 years, and here we are at the final four. It's not the ending that we wanted, but just to, just to look back and it's hard right now, of course, because all you're thinking about is a loss, but the, this is relationships and memories that we'll have for the rest of our life. And I know we're proud of being here. Um, the, just the standard at UConn is national championships, so it's always disappointing. But 
Uh, I know we'll reflect after this and, and just get better from here. I'm going to stay to our right, Dion, and then we'll go to you. All right. Dion Cash, Fox Sports. Um, great season, ladies. Um, Paige, how does it feel to be able to play injury free? I know that was big for you this year. And what's it like to, you know, to be a UConn Lady Husky and play for Gino Oriyama? All three of you ladies. Let's start with Aaliyah. Um, just truly grateful to be a part of this program, play alongside such talented players like the ones that are sitting beside me and also the ones that are back in the locker room. Um, it's, it's tough that this is my last time. I, I shared the court with all of them and the last time um, playing under a coach. Uh, it's just no words how much the program and everyone who supports the program has poured into me and, and what I've gotten out of it as well, but also just the, how much I've grown not only as a player, but as a person under coach. And um, I'm just thankful for him and everyone who's a part of this program and lend a hand in, in um, my growth as a player. Anika? Um, I'm just, I'm just very grateful to coach um, for bringing me all the way from, you know, Croatia to here. Never in my life, you know, would I, would I have thought that I would be here, sharing this, this court with these amazing people, great players, great coaches, great staff, and just enjoying every single moment of it. And I'm pissed right now. It really hurts. But I know that I'll look back onto this and I'll feel nothing but 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 being thankful and grateful and blessed for what I've built here, what kind of experiences I've had here, because this is family for life. And they loved me when when I was at my worst, when I was at my best, and it's it stays forever. And I'm just very grateful to have to have had that luck and opportunity to, you know come all the way where I came from to this, you know, to this place, it's special. Paige, would you like to answer? Um, yeah, to your first point, I, I mean, yeah, I've now I've played a full se full season college basketball injury free. Very blessed, I'm grateful for that. Um, but yeah, just to these guys' point, um, everybody comes to UConn to play for coach. Um, he challenges you, he believes in you, he trusts you, and he always has your back. Um, and he's everything we could ask for in a coach. Um, and it's everything I dreamed of to, to play for him, to play for the whole coaching staff, to play in this program, to play along people um, that are my sisters. Um, so it's really just been a dream come true. And I'm extremely grateful he recruited me here. Um, he recruited everybody else around me here because I love every single one of them. Um, and just I owe everything to this program, and I'm super thankful. We'll take our last question. For, for Paige, and Nika, Paige and Nika, um, how, sh how should uh, UConn fans remember Aaliyah? I would say, I would definitely say not how should they, but how they will remember her. And that's as one of the greats here and as one of the players that had to overcome so much to get noticed, to get credit for what she does every day. And um, I feel like this year she finally got the credit, not even enough to, to how much she should have gotten, but I feel like, you know, um, she's been the most solid rock for us all these four years when we were dealing with so much. She's the most consistent one, the hardest worker. Um, and she just puts her head down, doesn't talk. She just, you know, works. And um, I'm as much as, you know, devastated I am that we couldn't leave here with, you know, one thing that me and her and, I mean, all of us came here for, and that's a national championship. I feel like, you know, we gave it our all, and we really left it out there 100%. 
And I mean, I feel like that's what people should remember her for. Just a player that always leaves 100% out there no matter what. No matter who's watching, no matter if nobody talks about her. She leaves it all out there, and I can't wait for the things that are coming for her because she, she's one of the greats, and she's going to be great. And Paige? Yeah, I mean, to the national media, she's underappreciated, underrespected. Um, she deserves, I mean, the UConn fans, and they know every single game, every single day what she brings, and that's competitive spirit, drive, determination, domination, um, and just the will to win. Um, she does everything. She never complains once about what she doesn't receive, how much credit she gets. She just puts her head down, like Nika said, and she just works and does anything this team asks and needs of her. Um, and she was, she was put on a heavy load this entire year, this entire four years, as the person who was the most consistent in the lineup, always carried the heaviest load, always handled the pressure. Um, and just showed up every single day ready to go, um, regardless of the circumstances and who who was around her. So, I mean, UConn fans know how much Aaliyah means to this program. Like Aaliyah, or like Nika said, she's one of the greats. Um, and I'm so, so, so glad she gets to go up on that wall and she was recognized um, as a first-team All-American because that's what she's been. Um, so Aaliyah's everything to this program. She embodies this program. Um, and she's going down as one of the greats. Paige, Aaliyah, Nika, thank you very much for your time this evening. As a reminder to the media, all three will be available in the mix zone for uh, 10 minutes. They're going there right now. Thank you. And at this thank time, we'd like to open it up for questions for Coach. We'll start with Jake. We'll go to Lindsay next. Jake Chatter from ESPN. Gino, what did you make of the illegal screen call there at the end? I mean, there's probably an illegal screen call um, yeah, you could make on every single possession. I just know there were three or four of them called on us, and I don't think there were any called on them. So I guess we just got to get better at not setting illegal screens. Go to Lindsay. Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Gino, to follow up on that, Coach Yo from Old Miss, right after the game, tweeted, you know, that they call moving screen a lot on the screen, rescreen action. And she said, I think Gino screamed because he wished he could have that playback. And I wondered, was Who that, said that Coach Yo at Old Miss? And I just wondered if, or was you, were you reacting because you didn't like the call, or did you think that you should have run something different? I don't remember. We can go up to the front row on our left-hand side. We'll go Jonathan, Howard, I see you. We'll go second row and then back up to the front. Thanks, uh, Gino. Um, to listen to what Paige and the other players said about you here a few minutes ago, and in particular knowing that Paige is coming back next year, what does it mean to you to be sitting next to them when they're saying what they said about you in this program? Uh, <clears throat> I mean, the object of what we do is um, to try to get people that we can impact. And it's, it's a great feeling when you feel like you have impacted um, people that are at an impactful age. Um, I think every coach <clears throat> that coaches has players that feel about them the way uh, these three uh, feel uh, about me. I mean, that's what we do. That's what we do for a living. And you, you hope that you have players that appreciate it. You hope that you have players that understand what, we're, what it is that we're trying to do. Um, and, you know, it doesn't always manifest itself in wins and losses. Um, but you would hope that if players have played for you for four years, 
um, that they would feel the same way about you that you feel about them and how much they've impacted you as a coach and what you've what you've been able to take from them and that's you know that's what makes this when it when it's done right that's what makes this this profession you know as great as it is you know think about when you were their age and you had an impactful teacher that you felt like really helped you get from where you were to where you wanted to go and how much that meant to you at that age um, so it means that means a lot to you for them to say that and um, you know I hope that um, I hope they <clears throat> they understand the impact they had on me I'm going to stay to our left Howard do you know uh, Howard Mendel at the next uh, there's a lot of talk from your players. You've talked about the expectations with this program. Um, obviously, it's not a national championship this year. It's six out of the last seven opportunities to make a Final Four. You make a Final Four at a time that this game has never been harder or had more parity in the game. And I just, I just wonder two parts to it. One is, do you find yourself able to take the level of satisfaction you'd like to out of, like you said, the impact you have on people and the success that you have, and do you think that the expectations should be different at this moment? Uh, <clears throat> well, the um, the, the expectations uh, at at UConn are what they are because we we created them. You know, somebody didn't walk into our building and say, "Okay, this is what's expected of you." You know, we we put that on ourselves now for the last 30 years. What pisses me off is that the minute we don't win a national championship for a couple of years, people think that our program now is less worthy of some others that have done it twice or have gone to the Final Four three out of the last four years. So I think it's, it's more rewarding on my end, not just to, to win a national championship. Obviously, you want to win a national championship every year. But people should talk about their own accomplishments instead of you know, talking about what we're not accomplishing. That seems to be the big story. And I said this a long time ago. You know, the only story is like when, you know, like when Tiger was at the height of his career, the only story on every Sunday was he didn't win. Nobody cared who did win. And now people always wanted it to be like, well, can we celebrate other people? Okay, well, then celebrate them. And stop talking about us when we don't win a national championship. But, again, that's the world that we created. And, um, you know, we might not win a national championship, but we're right there when it's usually being decided. And that's all that matters. I'm going to stay to our left. Please proceed. Gino, Kenny wrote a WHBC radio when the – uh, ladies were talking, you were looking at the stat sheet. Mm. I saw you studying it very closely. Um, you hold Caitlin to a poor night shooting. What jumped off the stat sheet at you as you think about this this loss? <clears throat> well, if you'd have given me this stat sheet without the final score before the game, I would have told you we won the game. Um, they're the, they're the highest scoring team in the country. And we feel like if we, if we hold you to 71, we should win that game. And we should have won the game. But I would thought they should have won the game. And they did win the game. So sometimes you go, well, both teams deserve to win the game. I mean, we should have won the game. I'm not saying we deserve to win the game. But based on this stat sheet, when you look at it, you say, well, yeah, we should have won the game. However, not one play, somebody said not one play decides the game. But when you look at it, for us, the way we've won this year in games like this is Aaliyah, Paige, especially those two, and then a third scorer, they all have big nights. 
because that's what we need in games like this. And tonight, we didn't get that. Tonight, we didn't get that. And I've said this a, a lot, that I bet you in the 40 years that I've been at Connecticut, and I don't know how many NCAA tournaments and all this stuff, our defense, I bet you I could count on my thumbs how many times they've let us down in the NCAA tournament. And the NCAA tournament will let you down as your offense. And if you don't make shots, and if you don't convert on the opportunities that you get, you're setting yourself up to lose. Yeah, so our defense was good enough to make sure that we won the game tonight. But uh, offensively, we just didn't have enough um, you know, impactful players play their normal game. We're gonna so, go, I'm sorry, did I cut no, you off? No, no. We're going to go to the front row on our left. I'll, then we're going to go back to Nancy, then Doug, and then I'll work through the rest of the list. Vicki Fulkerson from the New London Day in Connecticut. Uh, Gino, um, a, a lot of times in the last couple of days you've, you've qualified, um, you know, in my 40 years coaching, this is the most, you know, amazing run, you know, thing that we've done or the most, you know, uh, overcoming the odds or can, can you, uh, you touched on it a little bit, but can you um, uh, elaborate a little bit on the impact that they've had on you? <clears throat> yeah, we were talking earlier uh, today that um, there have been two instances at Connecticut that have been quite unexpected or quite remarkable. I don't know how you want to phrase it, but in 1991, when we went to our very first Final Four, there was absolutely no way to predict or explain how that happened. And yet it was the beginning of our, you know, of our program as it, as it is, exists, exists today. Everything, everything else since then, it was expected that we would be here because of the situation that we were in, the kind of teams that we had and the runs that we went on. And this year was the first one. I even told the players during pregame introductions, I, I said, this is the first time that we've come here where it feels like we're the visitors, where it feels like you know, we're actually the underdogs and no one expects us to win. And we did talk about getting here was the, was the hardest part. And you appreciate that so much. Today was probably the calmest that we've been in any NCAA tournament game this year or any other year. There was a calmness about us, about what we have done and what that what happened today was not going to change how we feel until the final buzzer then it changed everything about how you feel so yeah it was an amazing run loved every minute of it incredibly grateful and tremendously disappointed and down the road it'll sink in but you know when you do this job for a living the minute you stop, the minute you start thinking about, wow, that was amazing. That should make you feel really, really good. That lasts about 30 seconds. And then you start going over in your mind all the things that happened in the game that you wish you had done differently to win the game. That's, that's the problem with this job. We'll stay to our right, Nancy. Yeah. Gino, Nancy Armour, USA Today Sports. Um, it might be hard to, or sorry to ask you to kind of put this in perspective after the, the loss, but there was a, a little girl who was holding up a poster that said, why I play basketball, and it had a photo of Caitlin and a photo of Paige. And I'm just wondering, given your history in the game, you know, everything you've seen, what is it like to see what you got tonight? I mean, sold out arena, people were engaged in the game in a way that we've not really seen before. It's going to be a huge TV audience. Um, you know, can you put that into perspective of what yeah. it's been like to see this? Yeah, it's I, – I said this up at UConn a few years ago. Um, everybody kind of poo-pooed, you know, women's basketball 25 years ago, maybe, whenever it was. And it wasn't 
taken, um, it wasn't given the respect that it deserved back then. So people didn't know who their idols were. People didn't know who they wanted to, to emulate because they never saw them until their dads got to be in their 30s and had little girls and started actually taking them to the games. And then all these little girls wanted to be like, who? Whoever was on their, their team at, at the college where they went to the games, and now I want to be like, you name it, all those kids that played. And now kids that have never seen these two kids play in person are the biggest fans and they idolize these kids. So it's become a mainstream sport now. Because when little kids start wearing your jerseys and start wanting to grow up like you, that means you've really touched the nerve. And it takes certain kind of players. It takes certain special players to be able to do that. And people think, well, you win a lot of games. That's what happens. I don't think winning, winning creates idols. You know, I think the way people act, the way they behave, the way they treat people, you know, Caitlin and, and, and Paige, just two examples. They have never, ever, ever, I have never seen them walk away from an opportunity to say hi to a little kid or an adult or anybody for that matter. And I hope it never gets that way, you know, where you go to a, a professional sport and you can't get near anybody, they, you can't talk to anybody, you can't have any interaction with them. And I don't know that there's that same connection that there used to be between little kids going to a baseball game and, you know, standing there and being able to talk to the players. So as long as we contain, maintain that, there's going to be a whole other generation of kids coming up wanting to be like the kids that they see right now. As long as we continue to provide access for those kids, you know, to interact with each other. And that's what's happening now. We'll take our last question from Doug from AP. Hey, Gina, Doug Feinberg, the AP. I was hoping to talk a little bit more just about what Nika and Aliyah did tonight and what they've brought to you for so many years? Well, um, it's hard to, uh, you know, it's hard to wrap your thoughts uh, in a neat, neat little package and put a bow on it when there's so many emotions that, that you go through with these kids over a four-year period. Um, so many highs, so many lows, so many in-betweens, um, so many um, accomplishments that they've had, so many failures that they've had, disappointments, uh, amazing experiences. Um, it, it, it is kind of similar to um, the experience that you have with your kids between the ages of, you know, 17, 18, and 22, where, you know, they, they are the most, those are the most impactful years, as I've said earlier, and you get to spend it with them. Um, and Nika, Nika has an effect on every single person that she meets. Her, her passion for life and her uh, just, the way she embraces uh, every challenge, every opportunity. Um, you know, there is that, you know, coming to America immigrant kind of mentality of I'm so grateful for the opportunity. I'm going to go there and I'm going to show everybody that I deserve this opportunity and I'm going to go home and everybody's going to be proud of me. You know, there's a lot going on in there. Um, Aliyah. You know, much quieter, much different personality. Um, more of a, there's more stoicism. And it's just a matter, if for her, it's just, I have some goals. I have uh, some um, tremendously high aspirations. I come, I do my, my thing every day. I work hard at my game. You know, I'm, uh, I'm a tremendous teammate. I'm a great kid. Um, and... I represent myself, my team, my family in, in a way that everyone is absolutely positively proud of me. So they, they both accomplish the same things. They just go about it in two completely different ways. Um, and maybe that's why it works so well together with the two of them.